All right, we've got the Model Y loaded up with the ski rack and all of our skis. We are gonna go head up to opening day at Hunter Mountain in New York. So we've got like a two hour drive here and gonna require some charging on the way back home. But come along with us. Uh, I'm gonna show you just how much a ski rack and uh, skis uh, hurt the overall efficiency of the car uh, due to the aerodynamic effects. Uh, so let's go check it out. Let's drive. Alright, we're driving along the highway here and we're at highway speeds and you can just hear, actually I don't know if the microphone is picking up, but uh, certainly in here you can hear the whistling sound that the skis up there are making. So, uh, and I can tell that this is definitely having an effect on the aerodynamics already because our uh, estimated state of charge upon arrival is just plummeting. We've lost like 10% basically already uh, on the estimate. But this was showing uh, a 35% state of charge estimate when we left the house. But we'll check uh, as we get a little bit further what we're actually seeing with our uh, energy consumption. All right, so we just ticked below 50% and uh, some shocking stats here. So we have only gone 83 miles and we've used 50% of the battery. We left with 100%. So uh, with this current efficiency, we would get 160 miles only of range here. And this is the long range Model Y that's supposed to get 313 uh, miles of range, it says. So uh, you can see here, we uh, have been driving for an hour and 12 minutes, 83 miles. We are using 416 watt hours per mile, uh, which is incredibly high. So overall, uh, you can see in the lifetime of the car, we've done just under 21,000 miles and our average energy used is 275 watt hours per mile. So, you know, that'd be a mix of highway and city driving. In, in uh, EV, you actually get bus efficiency on the highway because you're going at higher speeds and in EV the aerodynamics are what matter the most uh, for efficiency. So uh, this is a little bit unfair because we've been almost entirely on the highway in this drive. But uh, we have been going like 5 to 10 uh, over the speed limit uh, you know, for the most part here. Uh, we have been behind uh, a couple of like other cars and trucks and stuff. Not a whole lot. Not like hypermiling or anything. but. Um, it should have helped a little bit. And um, what we are seeing here is just the effects that we uh, are having from aerodynamic lo uh, efficiency loss here from the ski racks and the skis up there. And we can see that here. Uh, here is our consumption. So yeah, showing that we would only get another 91 miles of range here, uh, which is pretty bad. And uh, here is why. So 12.4% more than our projection uh, on this trip so far. Uh, majority of it is from uh, just categorizes as driving, but that is basically where uh, aerodynamic drag uh, is coming into play. And so if we had stayed under 70, we would have saved 3.3% uh, more, which is really not that much. Uh, we are facing a bit of a headwind, so 3.1 mile per hour wind from the northwest cost us 1.6%. We are heading essentially northwest, uh, so we're going straight into that wind, and we felt that a little bit kind of trying to push us around the road. Uh, we, Because it's so cold, our tire pressure has actually gone down. I'll show that in a second. I think we're at like 36 PSI. Uh, normally I keep it at like 45, I think is around the recommended, and uh, we've used uh, an additional um, energy on the climate control uh, and lost some due to the air drag, tire drag, and battery conditioning from the cold weather here. Uh, so that was 1.1%. So let's see, it would cold air mean more drag? If the air is colder, yeah, it'd be denser, so you'd have a little bit more drag from that. So I don't know how much that really accounts for, but uh, that's not helping either. Um, but one of the bigger things here, in addition to just the drag that we're getting from the skis and the ski rack here, is um, the because of the cold weather, it's 29 degrees and it's been like mid-20s basically this whole drive. Uh, not only are we using the heat a little bit more, which uses energy, 
but um, it actually takes more energy. Uh, you get the, the batteries themselves become less efficient in the cold, and uh, the car is actually trying to use the heat a little bit to try to keep the batteries warmer to make them uh, more efficient. So uh, that itself is using a little bit more energy. Uh, yeah, and here's our tire pressure. So we're at 37 psi uh, all around right now. Recommended is 42. So we'll probably put some more air in uh, tonight since we're in the midst of the cold weather now. But yeah, that's pretty um, pretty dramatic how much efficiency we're losing here from our uh, from the weather and from the skis. So definitely something you need to be aware of and plan for if you're doing uh, an EV trip, especially going out skiing. I think this is one of the uh, biggest tests for EVs. It's just driving around in the cold weather like this and uh, you know, driving at highway speeds with basically a bunch of drag uh, effects just uh, on the top of the car. So uh, we'll do a little report on our way back out too, but uh, you can just see how big of an effect this stuff actually does have on you. All right, we are here at Hunter now, getting ready to hit the slopes. And just wanted to show the charger here that I've got such a love-hate, mostly hate relationship with. So we've got us, there's a Model uh, 3 there, and then I see a Model X right here. So you just see more and more EVs here. So places like this are gonna need more and more uh, EV charging. But um, you know, it's funny, like two seasons ago when we would come here, there were never any other EVs here. We'd only, we'd be the only ones here. Uh, but this charger would never work. Now they've actually improved the charger, but it's already taken. We're almost first share here and uh, it's already full. So we've got a Model 3, an IX charging, nice. Uh, a Bolt that is not actually charging, a Polestar and a Tesla also not charging. But uh, yeah, I mean, they definitely just need some more infrastructure here because this charge point charger fully used and then got cars plugged into the weird wall outlet thingy here. Well, actually, one's not being used, so we could have come in, parked there maybe. I wonder if we could park on the other side. Might have to ask because this would make a huge difference here because uh, we're quite far from the highway. There's no chargers around here. And uh, as you can see, it takes a lot of energy to uh, get out here. So we're definitely gonna have to stop and supercharge on the way home. Uh, it seems like they're not really like you know, this one. Actually, over there. Hmm, might be worth a check. All right, we just finished our day skiing. It was awesome at Hunter. Uh, very good opening day. And um, we are gonna head home now. We've got 24% left. We weren't able to use the chargers here, unfortunately. But um, we're just gonna stop for a charge on the way. All right, well, we're charging up here in New Paltz, and so is everybody else in the universe. Very busy weekend here. Actually, every time we've come here, it's been pretty busy. I think they maybe upgraded these since we've been here last. I remember these being super slow. Now they are V3 ones, uh, and there are eight here. I kind of remember six, but I might be wrong. Uh, and they've got this one here that you can kind of pull into, which is nice. Uh, but still couldn't do a trailer here because you'd be blocking the uh, route. But we were just packed and just shows how uh, many more Teslas are out there on the road now. There's also kind of a busy corridor here, uh, you know, near the ski slopes and everything. And it's also Thanksgiving weekend, so that can be part of it. But it's going to be tough when we have non-Teslas here. All right, we are all set here. Not the best charging session ever, but, uh, I mean, I actually don't know if this is correct or not. We were only getting 100 kilowatts uh, toward the end there. We pulled in at 3% and uh, charged for about 20 minutes, and now we are up to 56%. So we started out at like 170 kilowatts uh, and like tapered down below 100. We got a little warning that it needed to heat uh, the battery for optimal performance, so maybe just cold battery here, although it was preconditioning the whole drive down, so I don't know what was going on there. Oh well, back home. All right, now, obviously having a Tesla and using the supercharging network is great, but sometimes you just don't have that option, whether you're in a more remote place or if you might be along the New York State Thruway, uh, like we are here where they have uh, only CCS chargers. So this one is a EV Connect one. There's also a ton of new Apple green ones that they've been installing, uh, which is an Irish company. Um, but uh, what we can actually do here is, thanks to this CCS uh, adapter, 
from Tez Plus and Hand Show, we can uh, charge here. So let's check that out. All right, so great packaging. I like that you can give you a little uh, felt carrying case for it, which is great. So you can have it in the back of your car without it getting all dusty. Usually not a good thing to get uh, dust into anything that's gonna be dealing with high voltage uh, electronics. So you can see here, this is just the CCS side that you would plug into. Here's the Tesla side, and that would just plug straight into the car. So we can use this to charge up here, which is great because with uh, what poor efficiency we've been getting, we actually need an extra stop now. So uh, we'll try this out in a moment. Uh, but you can get one of these yourself from uh, Test Plus and Henshow. Uh, link is gonna be down in the description below. Make sure you pick yours up to have this uh, great option here to really help save the day on road trips like this one. All right, so we are almost getting off the highway. You can see we've driven 75 miles since our last charge. And we're now consuming 344 watt hours per mile. So much better than the drive up to Hunter. And part of that, I think, is we reconfigure the skis here, so I have the uh, the tips the back uh, facing forward, which should have a little bit less drag, and then the kids' skis are in the trunk instead. So we have just fewer things putting uh, drag on the car. And look at our efficiency here, actually less than what the trip production was. Uh, we had Somehow now we had wind from the southeast. So I guess it turned around, but whatever. Uh, and we lost a little from low tire pressure, but probably the water temperature has helped us a bit. So anyway, a little bit better now than before. And there you go, 332 watt hours per mile compared to 276 uh, on average. But much better than the four whatever we were getting before. All right, so. All right, so hopefully that answers the questions of how aerodynamics affect your range in an EV and how other factors like cold and low tire pressure can also uh, hinder your uh, range due to lack uh, loss of efficiency in the cold weather. All right, well with that, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you do a like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we'll see you out there on the road.